Hey folks, how are you guys doing? Hope you're all having a great Tuesday as usual. The last video I put on my main channel was on the pantry slash closet organization. And really quick, I'd like to say that I lost two clips of narration in that video because I had my microphone plugged in, I had my microphone on and attached to me, but it wasn't plugged into the camera. So there's a couple scenes, uh, one I can think of off the top of my head was when I was routing the front edge of the smaller shelf pieces, um, I was off to one side and it was obvious that I, my clone, like I normally do, should have been on the left-hand side um, talking. And that's what I was doing. I was, I was explaining what was going on, but my audio was so crappy that I just didn't include it. So I had made that clip really quick and you may not have picked up on that, but uh, and the reason I bring that up is because during that clip, I was explaining that I was putting a bullnose edge on the front of all of my pieces for a, um, um, not utilitarian, what's the word I'm looking for? For a, a, a actual purpose rather than a cosmetic appearance. And the reason being is if I left the corners or the edges 90 degrees, then they're much more likely as you put stuff in to chip up and break off that thin veneer layer on the top of the plywood. So it serves a purpose of easing the transition and then also once it was sanded nice and smooth and then a film finish applied to it, it makes that front edge a lot more durable without having to add a face frame, which leads me to my first talking point here. A lot of people suggest or ask if I was going to add a face frame or some type of edge banding to the plywood. Well. There's two reasons why you would add a face frame or some type of banding. Um, if it's solid wood edge banding, then you typically you would use hardwood and that is so it'll add increased strength to an otherwise weak area in plywood, which is the end grain to prevent it from breaking up. Uh, the second thing is appearance. Well, I, mean, I explained why I did the, the bull nose, which was for a um, the, the the purpose of not being able to easily break off the pieces. So that solves that problem. And then as far as the appearance goes, this was 100% in my opinion, a complete function over fashion type of project. It was a complete utilitarian item. It's gonna spend 99.99% .99 of its entire life behind a door. And then when the door is open, it's sitting right next to three ugly things, my mop bucket, vacuum cleaner, and broom. So at that point, why do you, in my opinion, I see no need to make it look pretty as far as adding banding or painting it to match the closet and all that stuff. It was a 100% utilitarian um, project and solution in my opinion. Uh, another question or concern was isn't it kind of gross that you have a mop bucket and other cleaning stuff next to food items, food um, um, appliances like the toaster and all that stuff? And I don't think so, simply because my response to that was that when you sit down to eat your, your meal every night, most likely there's way more bacteria on your hands simply from using your cell phone or a keyboard or what you interact with on a daily basis than what would be in a mop bucket that was previously full of cleaning cleaning chemicals. So I don't see a problem with that. Um, some people do, some people don't. I don't. Um, next thing up is this week's project. We have a, a wheelbarrow sitting out front in our little, we have a, a little flower area by the two trees at the end of our driveway. And we've got this wheelbarrow that was left here by the previous owner that looks pretty cool. It's, it's, it's an older, beat up wheelbarrow. However, it's basically rotted quite a bit. Uh, it's got some metal features on it that I'd like to keep, but my objective, um, <laughs> it's been on the honey-do list for two years now. My wife's been saying, when are you gonna, when are you gonna do that? When are you gonna do that? Anyway, I'd like to uh, completely strip it down and rebuild it. And then if I can salvage all the metal, then that would be great to rebuild it and assemble it basically the way it was with a fresh coat of like barn red paint on all the wood and then um, paint all the metal black and then sit it back out there for a decoration piece. I know I could probably use it as like an actual utility item, um, but I don't need to. So it's completely decoration. And if I can't harvest the metal off of it, salvage the metal off of it, then I'm probably just going to um, 
screw it together and fasten it in such a way that uh, all of the nice metal is not exposed, but I can still have a wheelbarrow to put back out there. So I think I'm gonna do that this week. Um, and then also I wanna share with you a pretty cool puzzle that a guy named Tim Hall sent me. All right, so this is the puzzle. Check this out, the logo in there. But it's a rhombic puzzle, so that there's multiple sides here. That's the base, and then these pieces are all shaped, shaped in such a way, I'm kind of leaning behind my camera, hard to do this, uh, are kind of shaped in such a way that they fit in those intersecting planes, and you have to basically rebuild the shape and make it come out to a, a point on these three intersecting planes. But all these pieces are, are unique, and Man, this whole thing has been kicking my butt. I've yet to complete this thing and I've got about four hours of screwing with it. But anyway, I wanna read this to you, so let me see if I can't uh, change the focus. All right, the story behind this puzzle is Marvin Soliet, Solit designed the concept behind this puzzle as an offshoot of the Soma Cube. What Marvin did was to make the seven unique pieces rhombic. His original con configuration of pieces I have available at my website, made with nicer wood and more accurate cuts than the original. Additionally, I have made my own configuration of the pieces which you know have, which you now have in the box I sent you. The puzzle solved looks something like this. So you can kind of see the shape here as it's solved. Uh, go to hallcastle.com and you can see some more of these. But anyway, this thing is pretty darn neat. I've been, um, this is from Tim Hall. I've been playing chess against this guy and he's been kicking my butt for quite some time. And now he sent me a puzzle that he made. It's also kicking my butt. But anyway, I figured I would focus. I figured I would share this with you guys. It's a pretty neat puzzle and a pretty cool gift. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care. And that's all I got, so I'll talk to you next time.